And the first is, is the most obvious, like you said, resolution. And you know, this is what most people think of when you talk about display quality. And, um, and even here, VR presents some unique challenges compared to traditional displays. So maybe you can get into that. Well, the problem with resolution is that VR headsets have much wider fields of view than even the widest monitor. So whatever pixels are available are just spread across a much larger area than for a 2D display. And what that means is that in any given area, you have fewer pixels, so you just get lower resolution for a given number of pixels. So we estimate that getting to 2020 vision across the, the full human field of view would take more than 8K resolution. And now because of, of um, the way that the human visual system works, you don't actually need all of those pixels because our eyes don't actually you know, perceive things in high resolution across our entire field of view. Parts that you're focusing on you see in very high resolution, but your periphery is in a much lower resolution. But it's still way beyond what, what any display panel currently available can, can put out there today. Yeah, and, and not only are a lot more pixels required, but the quality of those pixels needs to increase. So today's VR headsets have substantially lower color range, brightness, and contrast than laptops, TVs, or mobile phones. So VR can't really get to that level of fine detail and accurate representation that we've become accustomed to with our 2D displays. So the challenge that we set ourselves here is to find out what it would take to get to a retinal resolution headset. And that means getting up towards, you know, about 60 pixels per degree in the display, which is about uh, a few times more than where we are today. And our display systems research team, um, you know, had to get pretty creative to get there. Um, so here is, is a look at a, uh, at a prototype um, called Butterscotch, uh, which has enough resolution um, that you can read the 2020 vision line on an, an eye chart in VR, the kind that you'd, you'd go when you were going to get an eye test to, to see if you needed glasses. And, you know, I mean, these prototypes, they're, they're kind of custom um, and bespoke models that we built um, in our lab. So they're not, they're not products that are ready to ship. But, but I mean, when, when, you know, when I go and try this out, it's, it's, um, you know, it's a pretty amazing experience and you can really see the, the image incredibly sharp. Yeah, so this is the latest of our retinal resolution prototypes and it gets us to near retinal resolution in VR, 55 pixels per degree, and that's two and a half times the resolution of Quest 2. So there are currently no display panels that support anything close to retinal resolution for the full field of view of VR headsets today. So what the Butterscotch team did was they shrank the field of view to about half that of a Quest 2 and developed a new hybrid lens that would fully resolve the higher resolution. And as you say, that prototype is nowhere near shippable. I mean, it's heavy, it's bulky, but it does a great job of showing how much of a difference higher resolution makes for the VR experience. And I have to say, the first time I put it on, it was almost felt like, well, it's hard to go back now because it was just so sharp. Yeah, it was, it was a pretty... Pretty impressive demo, but as you say, we, we try not to ship things with exposed circuit boards. <laughs> um, so as, as soon as we, we started testing this, you know, it, it became pretty clear that, that true realism um, needs that certain level of resolution. And you know, what we expect is that the display panel technology is going to keep improving generation after generation. And in the next few years, we're, we're probably going to get there some, somewhere like that. But the truth is that you know, even if we had a full retinal resolution display available right now, the rest of the graphics stack wouldn't really be able to deliver realistic visuals. And um, that goes to the second major challenge that we need to solve around depth of focus. So let, let's get into that now. Yeah, we realized that this was an issue around 2015. So that was back when Oculus sh shipped the Rift and then shortly thereafter shipped the touch controllers. And that first brought a sense of hand presence to VR. And what that made us realize was that once hands are really there, which they are now with hands in Quest, that you would really want to be able to focus on them to use them as effectively as possible. Now, that may seem obvious uh, and truly unexceptional at this point, because that's exactly how things work in the real world, but it's not how things work in VR. This is really one of those cases where the rules completely change in VR. And the reason is that in the real world, the lenses of our eyes change shape constantly to focus on the distance of whatever we're looking at. And that properly images the light that comes from that distance. But that's not the case today in VR. So the problem that we ran into here is that, um, you know, unlike our, our uh, actual eyes, current VR optics use solid lenses um, which don't move. 
or they don't flex. So that means that the focus point is fixed. And we usually set that to somewhere around five or six feet in front of you. So that way you can see things that are further out, but the, the issue is that virtual objects much closer send conflicting signals to our visual system. And th there isn't really a, an easy way around that with a single um, solid state lens. So, you know, our eyes are pretty remarkable and they pick up all kinds of, of subtle cues when it comes to depth and location. And when the distance between you and an object um, doesn't match the focusing distance, it can it can throw you off and be a bit uncomfortable. And your, your eyes try to focus and they can't quite get it right, which which can, can be tiring um, and, and can lead to a, a little bit of blurring. So retinal resolution alone on the display isn't enough. Um, you also need retinal resolution displays that can support a depth of focus that um, can hit 60 pixels per degree at all distances, ranging from near, so you can you know read a book that's that's pretty close to your face, to something that's pretty far away, so you can see the the details of the leaves on a tree, for example. And this is another example of how building for 3D headsets is so different from existing 2D displays, because you know when you have a computer monitor, it's at a fixed distance, and you're only focusing there. You don't need to be able to you know look at objects that are rendering closer or further. So to address this, you know, we came up with a way to change the focal depth to match where you're looking uh, by moving the lenses dynamically, kind of like how autofocus would work on a camera. And this is known in the industry as varifocal technology. So in 2017, um, the team built a prototype version of a Rift that had mechanical varifocal displays that could deliver a proper depth of focus. And it used eye tracking to tell where you were looking uh, and real-time distortion correction to compensate for the magnification effects of moving the lenses and any rendered blur. So that way only the things that you were trying to, to look at were in focus, um, just like if you, if you were trying to look at something close by in the physical world. Right, and then once they had that prototype, they ran a study to see if people actually preferred this varifocal technology. And on one day, they would enable varifocal fully on the prototype, and on the other, they would just operate it in fixed focus mode. And what they found was that the majority of participants preferred varifocal over fixed focus VR. They were more comfortable in every respect. They experienced less fatigue and blurry vision. They were able to identify small objects better. They had an easier time reading text, and they reacted to their visual environment more quickly. So here's the prototype. And, um, and once we had this feedback, um, the team put all their energy into getting the size and weight down um, and expanding the field of view. And the, the series of prototypes that they built, which we call Half Dome, um, ended up using fully electronic varifocal uh, based on liquid crystal lenses, which are, are much smaller. And, and even with all this progress, there's still a lot more work to do to get the, the performance of the varifocal hardware fully optimized, um, while also making sure that the eye tracking um, is reliable enough to make this work. So. You know, th this sort of feature needs to work for everyone all the time. So, so it's a very high bar. Um, but, but after resolution and focus, um, you know, th there are other things that we need to work on too. Another major challenge um, is the distortion that's produced by VR optics, like, like the kind that are in here. So you know, we've, we've built a number of ways to compensate for this in, in the software in Quest. You know, it's a pretty good approximation for, for now, but, but it isn't exactly right um, you know, a lot of the time because the, the distortion of a virtual image changes as your eye moves around um, to look in different directions. And, you know, our algorithms are, are pretty static. So that means that they don't work perfectly when you look around a scene. And, you know, this matters for overall image quality because it makes everything move just a, a slight bit as the eye moves, um, which can make VR uh, seem less realistic overall. So the, the correction that we do needs to be dynamic as the eye moves around. And it, it needs to work across all the different depths um, of focus that varifocal technology supports. And, and it also needs to be fast enough that the adjustments are imperceptible, which for, for visual perception um, is, is pretty fast, right? So, so this is, a, this is a, a quite a hard problem to solve, um, but it has the potential to produce images that are always stable, um, which, which static uh, software correction systems can't do.